Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about decking material, and we'd like to thank Bill Bowles for liking and sharing the podcast. And we also want to thank CastBox again for featuring us in their education category, and you can check them out at castbox.fm. It's C-A-S-T-B-O-X. And if you're looking for a great Android app, they do a nice job. They focus on podcasts and audiobooks. And I found out in their app, Mm -hmm. they have in-app recording functions. So you can create your own audio blog or a podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, so very interesting. That's cool. I told my sister about them last week. Okay. She's part of a book club. and. uh, she hadn't read the book yet, so she was looking for a way to listen to an audio book. <laughs> the, the Cliff Notes? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the real version, but just didn't have right. to read it, just listen to it. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, try CastBox. Yeah. One popular decking material is cedar, and ancient Phoenicians and Egyptians used cedar for their shipbuilding. The Egyptians also used it for making paper. They extracted its oil for mummification, and they found that it kept insects out of the tombs. Hmm. Pliny- nice. Pliny the Elder, Mm -hmm. he wrote about temples and statues made out of cedar because of its resistance to decay. And American Indians and early colonists used cedar oil to repel mosquitoes and moths. The main types of decking material are pressure-treated wood, and they're primarily going to be pine or fir. You have redwood, cedar, tropical hardwoods, the composites, and PVC. Pressure-treated decking is going to be the least expensive, and it's usually going to be pine, but fir is popular in some areas. The pressure-treated wood is rot, bug, and fungus-resistant, but it's not water-resistant, so it's going to be absorbing and losing moisture. And if you don't treat it with a water repellent or a stain or a solid color stain, it can twist or crack or cup over time because of the moisture. And then if you don't protect it from UV rays, it can discolor, and it can actually damage the wood fiber and shorten the life of it. With most pressure-treated lumber, you can apply a water repellent immediately after you install it, but check with the installation instructions for the wood and also the water repellent that you plan on using because there's constant changes in these chemicals. Where are you going to find installation instructions on the wood? (laughs) So wherever you're purchasing, especially if you get it from a lumber yard, you can have them give you the manufacturer's recommended maintenance and installation specs. Okay. And they'll be able to download that and give that to you. If the lumber says Thompsonized and some womanized, you can only use an oil-based exterior repellent or a stain. You can't use water-based. Hmm. And years ago, you had to wait six months for the wood to season before you stained it. Huh. But some of these newer chemicals only need 30 days. So check with the label or the installation instructions. But in general, the longer you wait, the better the results are going to be. Hmm. Some manufacturers recommend a moisture level of 12 to 15% before you stain, and if you stain or use a solid color stain too soon, the moisture can get locked in, so it's going to cause damage to the wood or the finish just won't stick. Hmm. Some top-rated low-cost moisture meters, the AccuMaster XT, and it's A-C-C-U-M-A-S-T-E-R, General Tools, and Xtech Instruments, it's E-X-T-E-C-H. And this is also good to check the moisture level of firewood. You want your firewood around 15 to 20% moisture, and you can use it to find leaks behind plaster or concrete block walls. You can test moisture levels before refinishing some materials, so they're handy to have. Pressure-treated wood is going to be easy to cut and fasten with nails, screws, or hidden fasteners, and you're primarily going to be using pressure-treated wood to build the frame no matter what your decking material is, and make sure you're getting ground contact rated pressure-treated wood for the framing. Mm -hmm. For most treated wood, you're going to be using hot dip galvanized nails or stainless steel, but check with the manufacturer's recommendations. Some of these chemicals they're using in treated wood need special coatings on the fasteners. Mm. You also need to match the hangers or the hidden fasteners with the material on the nails or the screws to prevent corrosion. And most pressure-treated wood is highly corrosive to aluminum. Hmm. It used to be easy to pick the fasteners for treated lumber. Why? Because before 2004, everything was pretty much everything was CCA lumber. So they used chromated copper arsenate, which I'm was... I'm guessing fa- one of those words are bad. 
<laughs> so it was phased out after 2004 because of the arsenic in it, mm-hmm. which highly toxic and a carcinogen. <laughs> but you never want to burn, even with these new chemicals, you never want to burn pressure-treated wood when you're cutting it or if you have to sand an area, you want to make sure you're wearing dust masks uh, and N95 or better or a respirator. Wear goggles, gloves, you want to wash your hands after handling pressure-treated wood. And they're also now recommending that you wash your work clothes separately from your regular clothes. Hmm. To maintain pressure-treated decking, you can use a solid color stain. So this is like a paint. It's going to form a film on top of the wood. It's heavy-duty, and you're going to have to refinish this once every five years or so. But check the label. You're going to want to know the moisture content before you use this. And how many coats? Is it one or two thin coats? You can use a semi-solid stain, and this is going to penetrate into the wood. This has good UV protection. Usually you have to refinish this once every two to three years. A semi-transparent stain has good UV protection depending on the manufacturer, and this is going to show off the natural characteristics of the wood. Usually has to be refinished every couple of years. Toners and oils, some don't have UV protection, so you need to look at the label. And this usually once a year, sometimes two, you'll have to refinish this. Some sealers and waterproofers can be applied to damp wood, but check the label. Usually once every year or two, you're going to have to reapply this. And some of these new products have nanotechnology. No way. So it's supposed to be able to penetrate deeper and bond better with the wood. Hmm. For more information, the listeners can actually go to our episode about staining a wood deck. You know, a, you know what I liked about that episode? We I talked. Did it. I, <laughs> I did it with you, uh-huh. and I talked about the water drop test to see if you need to reseal your oh, deck. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So you can put a few drops of water on the wood decking. If it beads up, you don't have to worry about it for that season. If it gets absorbed into the wood, it's time to refinish it. Nice. Again, but, listen to the episode. <laughs> I'd say it better, I think, in that episode. <laughs> Redwood and cedar decking have oils and tannins that are going to protect the wood from insects and rot. And in general, redwood is going to be a reddish brown in color, cedar a yellowish brown, but there's different families, so there's going to be color variations. And if you plan on staining your deck with a tinted stain to get a color, cedar is going to usually show off the colored stain better. Hmm. The cost of your decking is going to vary depending on the grade and the location. So the different grades, you can have wood with more knots and pinholes or just very clear, beautiful looking wood. And also, depending on the part of the country you're in and how far they need to ship this lumber. Mm -hmm. So I decided to run down to my local home center and see the redwood that they have. Yeah. And they have no redwood (laughs) because it was so expensive (laughs) to ship it from the West Coast. Hmm. And then depending on the type of cedar you can purchase really depends on your location. Some areas will carry like an eastern white or an Atlantic cedar, a northern white, or a southern red. Hmm. Because redwood and cedar are high in natural oils, you can actually leave it unfinished and still get a long life out of your decking. But it's going to slowly turn gray and those wood fibers are going to become damaged from UV and moisture over time. Hmm. A penetrating oil is the easiest to maintain and reapply rather than a solid color stain. Mm -hmm. The most durable wood decking is made from tropical hardwoods, and we talked about the Jenka Harden Scale in the indoor wood flooring episode. Uh, Another great episode. So the higher the number, the harder the wood, the more resistant to dents and wear. And red oak with a Jenka of 1290 is the industry standard for a quality indoor floor. Okay. So for outdoor decks, pine and fir, and again, it depends on the family, but you can have a 480 to a 690 Jenka with cedar, 350 to 900. When you get into these tropical hardwoods, tiger wood has mm-hmm. a Jenka of 1850, Masaranduba, 3190, and Ipe, 3684. So that's one of the hardest woods you can get. That's super exciting. <laughs> The hardwoods are going to be more expensive, but they're very durable. And to maintain the decking, the finishes or stains are specially designed. So a standard wood finish can't penetrate deep enough for protection into these hardwoods. So look for... Do they have nanotechnology? (laughs) I'm I'm sure they do. So look for (laughs) nanotechnology and something specifically made for the hardwood you're using. And I ran down to a couple of my local home centers. One of them only carried ePay, and the other one only carried Tigerwood. Hmm. So if you go to a lumber yard, you're actually going to have a better selection. Okay. 
Are we just going to continue to talk about different types of wood? <laughs> Or are you going to get into other stuff? So composite decking is made of a blend of plastic and wood fiber, most of them making it very durable. And that first generation of the composite decking, it would fade over time. It mm. also would stain. So if you were grilling, let's say, on your deck and you spilled grease, it was very difficult to get out. Wine was difficult to get out of the surface. And now they're much more fade and stain resistant. Your better quality decking is going to have a PVC cap or a shell on mm -hmm. the top and that's going to make it mold, mildew, scratch, and insect resistant. Hmm. But these are generally more expensive, right? Yes. The composite decking without a PVC shell and a higher percentage of wood can rot over time, and hmm. this is according to a report by the Forest Products Journal, and they're recommending treating the low-cost composite decking without a shell with preservative and an antifungal chemical. Hmm. Some composite decking will have a shell or a cap on the top, mm -hmm. but not on the bottom or sides. And the top-rated composite decking, it's going to have a PVC shell on all four sides, and they call that capped composite. Okay. If you see capped polymer, this is 100% PVC. It doesn't contain any wood fiber at all, so this is going to be very durable. What does it look and like, though? Is it, does it look like wood? So depending on the grade, you can get really deep textures and wood coloration. They do an amazing job. So, I mean, it, it, at a distance, it looks like wood. Okay. And with these colors, so, so with a different variety of colors, the dark color composites are going to get very hot, especially depending on your climate. Hmm. A lot of the pros are recommending light colors in a hot climate. So is wood decking cooler? Yes, wood decking is going to be cooler than composite. That's weird, they're, isn't it? They're, <laughs> yeah, well, that plastic's absorbing the I heat in you know, UV. So there's a manufacturer called Moisture Shield, and their decking has cool deck technology. They say that it absorbs 35% less heat. Hmm. And then Azac has alloy armor technology, and they say that this helps dissipate the heat. Some companies have railing and lighting options that match your decking. You can get post wraps or gate kits. And you want to check with your local inspector for the codes for your decking, the material that can be used, and the requirements for the framing. And mm. some areas have requirements for the flammability of your decking. So composite decking has a flame spread index from 0 to 200. 0 is the best, 200 is the worst. Class A is 0 to 25, Class B 26 to 75, and Class C 76 to 200. Because some composite materials high in plastic, they're more likely to ignite. Hmm. The Why does it go to 200? <laughs> yeah, like one, two, three. <laughs> Good, bad, and just, you know. Fire the, extinguisher. The National Fire Protection Association says that there's about 8,000 home fires a year from grilling. And with composite decking, you've got to worry about fire pits because the heat they generate can damage the decking. Mm -hmm. So one of the top-rated heat shields is called Deck Protect, and this is recommended by Trex Decking, and it's a volcanic fiber mat that sits in an aluminum frame, and this sits under your fire pit, and it keeps your decking from melting. Mm. When you're using composite decking, you want to make sure you're planning your deck frame very well to reduce the amount of the cuts and waste of material because that composite decking is expensive. Right. So you can get 10 foot, 12 foot, 16 or 20 foot long lengths. Mm -hmm. And check with the manufacturer the recommended joist spacing and the placement of the rail posts and the framing for the deck border. For the structural warranties on the decking, you have to follow the guidelines for the deck framing and installation from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's void. And make sure you're following the installation instructions for the proper spacing with the composite decking itself. They are going to expand and contract more than wood, hmm. and you have to leave a thermal expansion gap around the rail posts. And you also have to check the outdoor temperature. They don't want you installing this if it's too hot or too cold out. Hmm. Grooved decking uses hidden fasteners connected to grooves in the side of the decking, hmm. but not all grooved edges on decking are the same groove size. So make sure your decking is compatible with the hidden deck fasteners that you use. <laughs> An interesting tool I found for putting down decking is the CAMO, C-A-M-O, Hidden Deck Fastener System. So this will work on treated lumber, hardwood, PVC, and composite. And this CAMO tool is handheld. It spaces the decking, and it guides these special screws at an angle on both edges of the board. So you can load two screws in, and it's going to go in at an angle on the edge of the board and go into the joist. Hmm. And this is going to allow you to remove, let's say you have one damaged board in the future. Right. You can 
unscrew these and remove that one board where most of the other hidden fasteners you've got to remove all the boards up to the damage board or you've got to cut that board out and then you can't reuse those fasteners so you end up either having to screw it back in through the sides or running a screw through the face of the board. Mm. There's another system called Cortex. It's C-O-R-T-E-X, Hidden Fastener System. And this is putting screws through the face of your boards. And this is primarily for decking around the frame and the PVC trim and deck fascia. Mm -hmm. And where generally you're putting a screw through the face and it leaves that hole or it leaves an indentation. And what can happen sometimes is you get a mushrooming around the screw. Mm -hmm. This has a special tap and it has a special screw that goes in. And then you put a plug over it so it looks invisible. And there's some manufacturers like Azek, Trex, and TimberTech, Evergreen, and Fiberon that have color-matched plugs for the system. Oh, nice. To protect the pressure-treated lumber framing, you can use a joist seal tape on top of the joist. And most of these are going to create a watertight seal between your decking and the joist. And this is going to add life to the deck structure. It's going to prevent trap moisture from absorbing into the joists. It's going to reduce corrosion on the fasteners or connections. Some of the top rated joist tape, one is from Grace Vicor. It's G-R-A-C-E, V-Y-C-O-R, and DeckWise. And then there's a joist cap. So this is metal with butyl rubber inside. It's called Imus Cap. It's I-M-U-S-C-A-P. Some top-rated composite decking, Trex, T-R-E-X. They've got a 25-year stain and fade warranty. Timber Tech, they have a 25-year on some grades, 30-year on others. Azek, A-Z-E-K, 30-year. Moisture Shield, they have 20-year all the way up to a lifetime transferable, depending on the grade. Fiberon, F-I-B-E-R-O-N, 25-year. Evergreen, 25-year. And you can get samples of composite decking at the home centers and lumber yards because not all retailers are going to carry a full line of the decking. Trex, for example, they've got three grades. Their Select comes in four colors. They're Enhance in three colors, and they're Transcend in ten. Mm -hmm. And then you can get a one-inch square edge in different lengths, like 12, 16, and 20. They have a one-inch groove in different lengths and a two-inch square in different lengths. Hmm. So it's better if you do your shopping online. Right. And then if they don't have it in stock, they'll special order it for you. When I was on the Trex website, their decking is 95% recycled material. Hmm. So they're saving 400 million pounds of plastic and wood from going into the landfill every year. And they say a 500-square-foot deck has over 140,000 recycled plastic bags. Wow. So to give you a feel for the prices, I did some shopping at a couple of the home centers around me. So this is the Chicago area. I looked at 5 fourths by 6 by 16 foot long decking. Pressure treated was running around $10. Cedar, around $26. Hardwoods, $30 to $40. I looked at TimberTech, Trex, and Moisture Shield for composite decking. Mm -hmm. And it varied between $40 and $70 depending on the grade. Hmm. Do you have anything else to add? Pressure treated wood is going to be the lowest initial cost for decking, but you have the highest maintenance. And a couple of the studies I read say that you'll actually spend more money over the life of your deck if you maintain it properly right, than, because, than like a composite. Well, stain isn't cheap. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Tropical hardwoods, more expensive, more durable, and less maintenance than pressure treated wood. The wood composites without a cap are an entry level price getting into composite decking. Some of the pros are suggesting using a sealer on that. Mm -hmm. And then your capped wood composites and your capped polymers are the most durable, the highest rated. Very little maintenance. A lot of them just soap and water to clean up any spills. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter, at fixitcohost. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,
Dinks, 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 Dinks,